This is a quick overview of how to use the TFM5700 Modbus um, user interface. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to go to our Discover Our Com port. So we're going to go in Windows in the lower left corner, the magnifying glass type DEVICE, -E, Device Manager, and click Device Manager. And we're going to plug in the, the serial um, port device. We're going to plug this device in, which is a Modbus, which is an RS-45 to USB converter. And we're going to let Windows enumerate it, and Windows will tell us what COM port it appears on. So Windows is busy enumerating. And come on, Windows. Plug it into another COM port. There we go. It's COM3. So now that we know that we're on COM3, we're, we're going to go down here, hit refresh, and TFCOM3, I renamed the COM port here. Also, when the, this device is plugged in, you'll see the screen. The address in this particular one is 255, so I enter the address here. Once we have those two things done, we can hit start. By the way, um, here's uh, these are helpful uh, website links that bring to the product here. You can, um, you can uh, look at the driver website, uh, learn things about this particular driver. The reason we're using this one, this use is the FT232, which is a native to Windows. You don't need um, drivers. They're already in there, knock on wood. And there's other suppliers, and this help video appears here. So I'm going to click Next. I'm going to turn the flow on, and the flow meter will indicate the flow. The purpose of this screen is most people will be wanting to save data, and so we're going to we're going to change this to uh, S some number. It's going to change. It's going to create a file called Tactical Flow in the C Tactical Flow Test 5600.x. And the purpose of the reference is if you know that the SCFH is really 420, you might want to put 420 in here. Or if you're using boilers and doing um, genset things and you're creating 25 kilowatts of energy at this point uh, and you want to record that, it'll record that 25 kilowatts of energy. It will record the SCFH, the SCFH filter, and the total in SCF. The filtered is driven by something in the setup, which is the IIR. It's 0.5 as default. The higher the number, the less the effect the filter has. I'm going to turn the flow down, and we'll watch the filter in action. The filter is the red dotted line. If I that filter is designed to be happy with control systems or saving data that's pulsating. If the flow rate is pulsating uh, in a big way, you could change this to 0.2. And we'll look at what happens when we change the filter 0.2 by increasing the flow. The IIR filter will lag more and inject an infinite impulse response looking a lot like a an RC constant uh, of a capacitor. So there are that is the purpose of the IIR filter. In this graph, you can right click auto scale X and use these cursors here and focus in on a particular part of the curve. And right click auto scale X, put it back to where it was, and this is uh, the number of samps that were taken. Here's the the, uh, the filtered, and here's the, the flow rate, and here's the total. Back to the simple graph for the purpose of saving data. If we want to save data, we can sample the data every five seconds. So I'm going to click this. Notice this uh, light will blink. So one, two, three, four, blink. And this is blinking, telling you the saved save function is on. So, and you may notice as the flow changes and you 
say that maybe it's uh, 12 kilowatts of energy for the purpose of saving this, 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 and this. And uh, that is the setup is you can reset the totalizer. The totalizer, when it's reset, I'm going to reset the totalizer. I'm going to turn it off so the totalizer stays static. And then I'm going to, when the totalizer's done moving, the flow rate is finished now. The totalizer is no longer moving. I'm going to click Reset Totalizer. And resetting the totalizer causes 10 seconds of data suppression. So I'm going to say Do Not Reset. Or I'm going to reset it and say yes, reset. One chimpanzee, two chimpanzee, three chimpanzee, four chimpanzee, five chimpanzee, six. So we're back reading. Now I'm going to turn the flow back on. And we'll see that the flow comes back on. Right click. I'm going to clear the chart. And we can watch the data uh, growing. So there is... Right click, auto scale X, right click, turn it off. I'm going to turn the scale to, well, that's a, that's a good, good enough number. So there we go. And most importantly, when you plumb up any flow meter based on the inlet and outlet conditions, there are rules how many inlet, um, inlet diameter sizes there are. 15 diameters up. 10 diameters down is best practices when it's reduced in the valve. So as it gets nastier here at 40 with the valve because they assume that the valve's closed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pause and I'm going to open up. Well, I'll do it here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to turn the, the saving of the data off. And I'm going to control C. I'm going to open Windows with uh, Windows E and Control V to copy it in there. Open up the Excel file that is that um, file we took. And here is the uh, date. Here's the time it started. This is the absolute time. Um, and so if we want to graph this, insert, graph, curve, any one of these curves, you can look and see what, what goes. So that was a data disruption when the, when the flow is turned on and off and reset. So here's the totalizer. Um, so that's that. And I'm not going to save. And there's one more function this does is I'm going to go to the graph and save the data to Excel. This is the data that is in the buffer that's all this data here that is, um, we'll, we'll just do this graph. There's other insert, chart, graph. So we get to see the graph. So there's two different uh, graph possibilities. Don't save. And that's it. Thanks a million.